In this session, we can see about seed production in groundnut and gingelim. First, we say about groundnut seed production. It includes botany, method of seed production, seed color, selection of land, season, sowing, isolation distance, seed treatment, live seed separation, menus and fertilizers, nutritional deficiency, weed management, earthing up, pest and disease control, roguing, physiological maturity, pod sorting and storage. Botany Groundnut, it is botanically called Arachis kaipogia, belongs to the family Fabaceae under Leguminaceae. It was originated from Brazil and was introduced in India by about the 16th century. Economically, it is an oil seed crop and the oil extracted from kernel is edible and extensively used for industrial purpose. The oil cake and plant are utilized as nutritious cattle feed. The seed production in the multipurpose crop fetches importance owing to their lowest multiplication ratio which varies from 1x to 2, 8 to 1x to 5. But adoption of good seed production technique can aid in production of good quality seed with high yield potential. The flower possesses long tubular galax. Corolla consists of five free petals, which includes standard wing and kill petals. Stigma remains enclosed in kill petal even in fully opened flower. Hence, self pollination is the rule. The genus consists of a hypanthium that is long calyx tube, pinnate leaves, stipule adnate, monadalpus stamens that means 8 fertile, 2 staminoids, didynamus that is 4 long filaments with the globose anther plus 4 short filaments with the elongated anther, dimorphic, striped embryo, a geomorbic peg and also the underground fruiting habit and produces most of the flowers at the lower nodes. Seeds are produced by self pollination and fertilization. The crop pollination occurs to the extent of 0 to 5 percent and here the seeds are non-endospermic, contains 26 percent protein and 45 to 50 percent oil. Kernel is a rich source of phosphorus and vitamins. Here the principle of seed production is, it is produced by self pollination and fertilization. Here the cross pollination does not occur because the stigma remains enclosed in the kill petal even in fully opened flower. The method of seed production. Here the crop is raised under isolation and seeds are allowed to set by self pollination. Here self pollination and the extent of cross pollination is up to 0.5 percent. The stages of seed production. Here normally the seed production first breeder seed then go for foundation seed and then certified seeds. Since it is highly self pollinated five stages we can allow that is five tire system that means breeder seed from that we can produce foundation stage 1 then foundation stage 2 and then go for certified stage 1 and certified stage 2 the varieties there are three types are available that is spreading variety semi spreading variety and bunchy type here the first spreading type here the example is TMV134, semi spreading variety, example is TMV6810, then bunchy type here example is TMV2791112 and ALR1 and 2, then VRI1234, JL24, CO1, CO2 and BSR1. Here the dormancy is occur in some of the varieties. For example, TMV7, it undergo dormancy 10 days, then in CO1, 10 to 15 days, then in VRI2, 1 week dormancy is occur. The seed color of the kernel 
is varied according to the varieties. Here the light rose in case of TMV27, JL24, BRI12 and 3. Rose color in case of CO1 and CO2 and red color in case of ALR1. Red blotched with white in case of TMV10. The selection of land. It is important for production of genetically pure seeds. The land should be free from volunteer plants and the previous crop should not be grown at. Further, the land should be free from root rot caused by macrofemina species. The land should be prepared to find tilth for better establishment. The next is isolation. It is also important for maintenance of genetic purity and the field should be isolated from other groundnut varieties with a distance of 3 meter at all the sites. Then season. It is important for maximizing the yield. The selected season should be such that the maturation period should not coincide with rainy season because it will cause in situ germination of seeds at the time of harvest. However, December to January is recommended for irrigated crop and June to July is recommended for rain fed crop. Seeds and sowing. Here the seed rate for rain fed crop 140 kg per hectare, for irrigated crop 125 kg per hectare. The seed rate may be increased by 10 percent for bold seeded varieties like JL24, CO2 and TMV10. Then go for spacing. Based on the growing habit, the spacing is vary. For bunchy type, the spacing is 20 into 15 centimeter. For spreading type, 60 into 15 centimeter. For semi-spreading type, 45 into 15 centimeter. Pre-sowing seed treatment. The selection of pod. The seeds used for sowing should be foundation or certified class with the higher physical, physiological and genetic purity. The shriveled, damaged, naked and undersized fungal infected seeds should be separated from the seed material. Here the seeds are treated with trichoderma viridi at rate of 4 gram per kg. This can be done just before sowing. It is compatible with biofertilizers but should not be treated with fungicides. Otherwise, treat the seeds with tiram or mango sub at rate of 4 gram per kg of seeds. Otherwise, treat the seeds with 3 packets of rhizobial culture that is TNIU4 using rice cruel as a binder. If seed treatment is not carried out, then apply 10 packets of rhizobial culture with 25 kg of farmyard manure plus 25 kg of soil before sowing. The seed treatment will protect the young seedlings from root rot and collar rot infections. Then for breaking the seed dormancy, the sum of the varieties of groundnut that is TMV7, 10, CO1 and VRI2 possess seed dormancy, particularly when fresh seeds are used for sowing. So these seeds are treated with the 200 ppm of ethyl for 6 hours and then used for sowing. Live seed separation or removal of dead seeds are otherwise called as seed hardening with the calcium chloride solution. First the seeds are soaked in 0.5 percent calcium chloride solution for 6 hours. After 6 hours seeds should be spread over the moist cunny bag and covered with another moist bag for 24 hours. After 24 hours the seeds with the sprouted radical, it means just visible expression of radical should be separated and dried under shade. It should be repeated for 2 to 3 times with the 2 hours interval and all viable seed and with the expressed radical emergence should be separated and dried under shade. The dead seeds are separated by this process and sowing of viable seeds enables the establishment of required plant stand. The remaining seeds can be dried to original moisture content and stored for 7 to 10 days. Here the advantage of seed hardening is calcium deficiency can be overcome by soaking the seeds in calcium chloride solution. 10 to 15 percent of the yield can be increased. Seed rate will be reduced by means of sowing of live seed. Then dead seeds are used for domestic purpose especially oil extraction. Then sowing. The treated seeds are doubled at 4 cm depth under irrigated condition 
and line sowing is better for the rain fed crop. The gap filling should be done with pre germinated seed within 10 days. The sown seeds are to be protected from the cows and squirrels up to one week. Menus and fertilizers. Here we have to apply the compost at rate of 12.5 tonnes per hectare and also NPK 40, 40 and 60 kg per hectare. The nitrogen should be applied at the time of sowing, then phosphorus and potassium applied at the time of ploughing. Porax 10 kg per hectare. Then micronutrient mixture 12.5 kg per hectare, it should be applied on the surface after sowing. Gypsum application of 400 kg per hectare on 45th day of sowing mainly to increase the easy penetration of peg as well as the pot formation and filling up of the pots and also spray the DAP at 0.5 percent at flowering stage is also recommended for proper seed setting. Groundnut is highly susceptible to nutritional deficiency. Now we can see about some of the nutrient deficiency and remedies. Here the zinc nutrient deficiency it causes light yellow stripes along with veins and leaf blade under acute condition. Venal chlorosis and cessation of growth of terminal bud. So for this remedy we can apply zinc sulphate at rate of 25 kg per hectare as basal. Then iron. Here the deficiency symptom is intravenal chlorosis, depression of growth of aerial parts and standard growth. Here we can apply as a remedy spray 1% ferrous sulphate on 30th, 40th and 50 days after sowing. Then boron deficiency. Here the symptom is rosette appearance, pod development is affected resulting the production of pop seeds and also hollow heart seeds. So for this remedy we can apply borax 10 kg plus gypsum 200 kg per hectare at 45 days after sowing. Here sulphur deficiency the symptoms are stunted growth, chloritic plants, thin stemmed and spindle appearance. Here for that remedy we can apply application of gypsum at 45 days after sowing. Then calcium deficiency the symptom is a darkened plumule and single seeded pods. So we can apply gypsum at 45 days after sowing. The weed management. Pre-emergence application of herbicide namely fluchloralin at rate of 2 litre per hectare followed by hand weeding at 40 days after sowing or two hand weedings at 20 and 40 days after sowing can be followed. Then earthing up. It is most important operation during which each plant is earthed up with the porous soils which helps in bed formation and their easy penetration. It should be done at 40 to 45 days after sowing. During earthing up, gypsum is applied at rate of 400 kg per hectare and incorporated in the soil. This gypsum application encourages pod formation and better filling up of the pods. Then pest and disease management. Here the crop is susceptible to several pest and disease. Here the first one is radari caterpillar. For that we can spray dichlorovas 750 ml per hectare. Then second one is aphids. Spray metacystax at rate of 1 litre per hectare in 1000 litres of water. Then for prodinia and helianthes spray chlorpyripos. Then for for pod borer soil application that is prior to sowing we can dust the malathion 5 percent at rate of 25 kg per hectare. Then in case of white grubs soil application that is prior to sowing carbofuron 10 percent granules at rate of 12 kg per hectare. Then see about the disease some of the important disease. First one is Dicka leaf spot. For that we can spray Titan M45 at rate of 0.25 percent. Then rust, rust disease. For that we can spray mango syrup at rate of 1 kg per hectare. Then root rot. For that root rot we can see treatment with carbon decim 2 gram per kg. Irrigation. Even before sowing the pulverized soil is irrigated and after one day. When soil moisture is optimum, seeds are sown. 
Life irrigation is given on third day followed by once in 10 days depending upon the climatic conditions. The critical periods for the irrigation are peg formation stage that is 40 to 45 days, then flowering phase 25 to 60 days and maturity phase 60 to 90 days. Then spraying of 0.5 percent KCL at flowering and power development stage will aid in to mitigate the effect of water stress roguing. It is an important field operation needed for maintenance of genetic purity. It is done from seedling stage up to harvesting based on the spreading type, bunchy type and semi-spreading habitat. Then leaf color, dark or light green, flower characters, the number of pods, pod characters that is length, big shape, whether it is two or three seeded, then seed characters that is color of the testa. The off types that deviate from the original characters are removed from the plot and are destroyed. Then physiological maturation and harvesting, drying and falling of older leaves and yellowing of the top leaves indicate maturity. At maturation time, the inner side of the pod will be black in color instead of white and pod will give rattling sound. At the time of harvest, the field is irrigated and at sufficient moisture level, the plant is pulled as such. The malic hydroxide 0.5 percent is to be sprayed between 65 to 70 days to control the viviparous germination. Then staking. The pulled out plants are staked near the field in such a way that the pods are exposed to outside for easy drying. The height of the heap should be minimum to avoid heating up of pods during heaping. Pot shorting. In groundnut, pot shorting is done based on the number of seeds per pod. The single seeded pods may occur in almost all cultivars, but the single seededness is not cultivar specific. The number of seeds per pod is basically cultivar dependent. Though it is influenced to some extent by season and other factors also. The occurrence of three or four seeded pods was more common in bunchy type than in semi-spreading and spreading cultivars. Although two seeded pods were the most common. Pod beak. In groundnut, the tip of the indigestion fruit may end in an appendage called the beak. Five grades can be used to classify the groundnuts based on this character and they are absent, slight, moderate, prominent and very prominent. Then pot construction. The most commercial cultivars have construction between each seeds. A few do not especially the cultivars belonging to the subspecies fastigata. All groundnut cultivars can easily be graded to five construction groups wise that is none, slight, moderate, deep and very deep. Then pod reticulation. In general, most of the groundnut cultivars exhibit reticulation to different degrees. Then stripping. The pods are stripped from plants for its collection either manually or with groundnut stripper. It is the process by which pods are removed from the plants either mechanically or manually. The pod moisture content at the time of harvest will be 35 to 40 percent. Then drying. The pods are dried to 10 to 12 percent moisture content. Pod grading. Dried pods are graded with the round perforated metal sieve of 22 by 64 inch to 24 by 64 inch depending upon the variety. The mechanically injured, immature, shriveled, insect or disease infected, germinated and the undersized parts are removed by grading them with the groundnut pot grader using 18 by 64 inch, 22 by 64 inch round perforated metal sieves. Then decodication. The pots are decodicated before sowing using groundnut decodicator. The seeds are separated using decodicator and the moisture content will be 16 percent at the time. Kernel or seed grading. The seeds obtained from the decodication should be graded by using 18 by 64 inch round perforated metal sieve to remove the shriveled and undersized seeds. Then pod or kernel storage. Pod storage 
is the general practice of seed storage in groundnut because the kernels lost their viability faster than the pods. The pods can be dry dressed with theram or bevistin at rate of 4 gram per kg of pod for better storage. Or otherwise we can use the chlorine based calogen mixture at rate of 3 gram per kg of pods. For long term storage up to 2 years the pods can be stored in 700 coach polyethylene bag where the containers are heat sealed. For medium term storage up to 1 year the pods can be stored in interwoven polyvinyl bag. For short term storage seeds can be stored in new gunny bag containing calcium chloride at rate of 250 gram per 30 kg of pod in plastic container. The calcium chloride is used for absorbing the moisture from the gunny bag. Then the storage condition, the bag should be staked on the wooden pallets to avoid ground moisture contact with the pod in a zigzag manner under well ventilated rat and rain proof room. The bags are to be rearranged once in a month. The pods can be also fumigated with the sulfur at rate of 3 gram cubic meter as a preventive measure to avoid the pest infestation. The codown should be kept clean and neat with the periodical cleaning. Malathion spray has to be avoided for groundnut as it causes the quality of the seed. Yield Depending upon the varieties, season and agroclimatic condition prevailed in the area, the yield of the pots may be varied from 1400 to 2500 kg per hectare. Seed standards in case of foundation seed and certified seeds. Here for physical purity minimum it should be for foundation seed production and certified seed production it should be a 96 percent. Then in case of inert matter maximum permissible limit for foundation seed and certified seed, seed is 4 percent. Then other crop seeds that is maximum permissible limit is there is none in foundation seed production and certified seed production. The germination for foundation seed production and certified seed production it should be minimum 70 percent. The total wheat should be none in case of foundation seed production and certified seed production. The moisture content in case of previous container for foundation and certified seed production it is 9 percent. Vapor proof container it should be a 5 percent for both the foundation seed production and certified seed production. Students, so far we have learnt about seed production of groundnut and gingerly including land requirement, isolation, season, sowing, seed color variation, seed treatment, weed management, irrigation, menus and fertilizers, live seed separation, earthing up, roguing, pest and disease, harvesting, staking and storage. Next class we will see about the sunflower and castor varieties and hybrids. Thank you.